And we're back with Tony Jones, the author of the, the new best-selling ebook. <laughs> After uh, today. A Better Atonement. Uh, so first of all, uh, for folks who maybe aren't familiar with that word, I'm sure they're familiar with what we're going to talk about, but just yeah. the word atonement, what does that even mean? Yeah, it's a technical theological term, so we can avoid it for the rest of the interview if you like. Sure. I, I wouldn't mind. But it means what happened when Jesus died on the cross. So yeah. what does that mean for us as far as doctrine? Yeah, so like, you know, when you're a kid, somebody says to you, Jesus died for your sins. And you're like, okay, and you accept that, and you accept Jesus into your heart. And at a certain point, often it happens during like mid-adolescence, you'll be like, oh, how exactly does that work? What do you mean Jesus? Like, by what cosmic calculus yes. does the death of Jesus cleanse Equal. me of my sins? Yeah. And that's where theology kicks in. It's like, oh, well, actually, as my book shows, there have been like about a dozen major ideas of how the math works that Jesus dying on a cross cleanses us of our sin. Um, I'd say probably the most uh, popular today in the West in America evangelical Christianity would be that of, or maybe a menu of, including at the top, what is penal substitution? What is that theory of the atonement? Right, that's another technical term. So it basically boils down to this. God is angry at you because of your sin. Mm -hmm. And God's sense of justice is so all-encompassing that God couldn't possibly allow you into his presence because you're sinful. Mm -hmm. End of story until Jesus steps between you two, takes God's wrath, and now God looks at you and all he sees is Jesus, mm -hmm. and now you can experience eternal life with God. Now, let me play devil's advocate. Yeah. Somebody's probably watching going, well, that's exactly the way it is. That's what Paul says in Romans, and that has been the theory of the atonement since the early church, right? Wrong. Good question, but no. Uh, that theory of the atonement is, is modern. It's happened only recently because it, it happened really, it started with a guy named Anselm in the Middle Ages, just as the, there was no such thing before a thousand, before the year 1000 AD as that was thought of as like modern legal theory. There was no such thing. People lived in feudal systems with, you know, a Lord lived up on a hill and all the serfs lived you know, down the slopes, and they paid homage to their Lord, and the Lord protected them. Well, interestingly, theories of the atonement before the year 1000 looked a lot more like that, like it's a Lord protecting vassals or serfs and protecting those people from the attacks of evil. So in those days, there was a very popular theory of the atonement that said what Jesus did on the cross primarily was defeated Satan. Yeah. Defeated the person who's trying to destroy you. And this would be and the, the, you. the Christus victor. Christus victor is the Latin yes, term for it, but Christ the victor mm -hmm. over Satan. Well, now we live in a, the most litigious legal society in history. You and I, between federal law, state law, and local ordinances, we have, you and I each have more laws over us than any other human beings who've ever existed. Yeah. We think legally, so no surprise, we have a very legalistic under understanding of the atonement, and that's where you get things like, maybe when you were a kid in youth group, you heard something like, God's a judge, he condemns you to death, and then he takes off the robe and goes to the electric so chair kind of for you. So kind of Jesus the lawyer, so Yeah, to speak. right, yeah. it becomes a very judicial kind of thing, like there's a price to be paid, you, you've done something wrong, you earn a penalty, someone needs to pay that penalty. But the funny thing about this thing is, like if that ever happened in an actual courtroom and the judge's like, but I'm gonna go to the electric chair for this man I've just condemned to death. Everybody in the courtroom would be like, no dude, that's not how it works. That's not justice. Like you don't get to do that. Yeah. that that's right, that's not justice. So in the last 30 years, we've seen uh, the emergence, to, to use that word, of uh, uh, some new theories, mm -hmm. one of which has been developed by Rene Girard, who I'm a, a, a very big fan of. Yeah. Um, was it some of his theories that made you want to write about the atonement? Yeah, I think his theories are fascinating. So he comes at it and he brings kind of a fresh perspective because he's an anthropologist and not a theologian. Mm -hmm. And he says, look, throughout primitive human history, people said 
when bad things happen, it, it's because two people want the same thing and conflict builds up and resentment builds up and violence it, it ends up happening. I mean, in the earlier reports on Israel, we might even look at the whole thing of what continues to happen in the Middle East of all these resentments over the same piece of property. Mm -hmm. And so then violence happens. And Gerard says what people did in primitive religions was, you know, they throw a virgin into a volcano, right? Or they sacrifice an innocent victim. Yeah. And, all the, and all the tension dissipates. Right. Temporarily, right? Right. Until it starts to and come up again. And this is called a scapegoat. A scapegoat theory, right? And so Gerard says, but when Jesus goes to the cross, he shows the bankruptcy of that whole system. Violence does not cure anybody of their resentment. It never works. It's a dead end. And by God going to the cross, we look at Jesus on the cross and go, it doesn't work. Mm -hmm. The last scapegoat, he says. Not because he's the perfect scapegoat, but because he shows the whole system of scapegoating and bloodletting and violence to relieve pressure in society doesn't work. We have to find peaceful ways to resolve our conflict. So as a, uh, just a typical Christian at home, as they reflect upon their salvation, how important do you think it is of whatever theory of the atonement or doctrine that they cling to? How important is that to their salvation? Well, I, there's a two, there's a two sided answer to that question. The first side is not that important. If you embrace that Jesus' death on the cross had cosmic significance, that you can identify with that. In, in fact, since the early church, people have said this is a primarily important doctrine, but it's not a doctrine that gets you in or out of heaven. Your understanding of Jesus' death on the cross or the atonement, mm -hmm. that's not what does it for you. So it's not that important to get it right. In fact, there was no early church council that decided on one doctrine of the atonement like they did with the Trinity or the divinity of Christ or what books make the Bible. And it what maybe books wasn't don't quite as central as we think it is now. Right. Oh, it clearly wasn't. That's yeah. right. The other side of that coin, though, is I say, it's incredibly important. Yeah. It's, the, it's the single most important event. If you're a Christian, it's the single most important event. It is the event. In all of cosmic history. Yeah. So look at it, meditate on it. And I think if nothing else, look at Jesus hanging on the cross and go and think to myself, think to yourself, as Paul sings in Philippians 2, that God became human being and that God experienced ultimate solidarity with us as human beings, with our sense of loss, our sense of loneliness. And on the cross, even on the cross, Jesus yells out, my God, why have you forsaken me? Yes. That's incredible. Mm -hmm. Well, again, the, uh, the book is, if you want to learn a little more, it is a better atonement by uh, the professor, the great, the Dr. Tony <laughs> Jones. If you'd like to connect with Tony, you can go to TonyJ.net, or as we mentioned before, Patheos.com. The blog's called Theobloggy. It's Patheos.com slash blogs slash Tony, to Jones. Tony Jones. Like I said, he's there all the time. Tony, thanks so much for joining thanks, us. Drew. More Harvest continues after this.